Hi, I'm Sydney Galpern from SeeMeCakes.com and today I'm going to show you how to use the SeeMe Beer Bottle Mold with SeeMe Cakes Beer Bottle Brown Crystal Clear Ice Malt Tiles to create ice malt beer bottles. So all the ice malt that I'm using today is pre-cooked, okay, so it's already been cooked down from the powder and this is going to be ready to use just directly, pop it in the microwave and melt it down until it's a liquid. So like I said, all you have to do is put it in the microwave for about 30 seconds and then 15 second intervals until it's liquid and then use it into your mold just like that. You don't have to worry about temperatures or ingredients, just melt it till it's a liquid consistency that you can pour, okay? Now I'm using ice malt today instead of sugar because ice malt is going to be a lot easier texture. You can apply all these techniques I'm going to show you into working with sugar as well but the only thing is that sugar if you use it especially being in a humid area like I am obviously in Florida um, is going to affect the texture of it it can melt okay so uh, sugar can from any sort of humidity kind of become sticky and eventually it will start dripping and falling over and not hold any shape ice melt stands up to humidity a lot better I've had pieces for months and they have not fallen over um, we are going to seal this with a little bit of edible glaze to keep out any stray humidity or tackiness that could get to it but overall this is just going to be an easier your texture to work with it's also going to be a lot clearer and a lot stronger than sugar uh, sugar can sometimes get a little bit brittle so that's why I prefer using ice malt instead of sugar so that's what we're gonna be using today so the one thing you want to remember when working with ice malt is it is going to be extremely extremely hot when it's liquid like this it's about 300 degrees so it can cause serious burns uh, I usually recommend wearing gloves to avoid that so what I recommend is a cotton glove which is going to buffer the heat and protect your hands from that heat and then a plastic glove over top like a thin plastic glove over that will keep any lint out and keep it from sticking um, and that will just kind of protect your hands and make sure that you don't have any burns Okay, so I have my gloves on now and I'm going to go ahead and take apart my mold here so you can see the nice bottle shape. It's the two-part mold, so we're going to have to put these together first. So it's actually going to sit upside down when you pour it and we're going to pour into the bottom section. That's where the hole is on the top here. So I'm just going to align these so that they fit together. And then I have three rubber bands here. I'm going to put one on the bottom, one in the middle. And then one right on the top and that will just hold it together and make sure it's nice and secure. All right, and now I have my ice malt here that I heated up, like I said, about 30 seconds and then 15 second intervals until it's a nice liquid consistency that I'm gonna be able to fill up the bottom mold. So I'm just gonna go ahead and again, making sure that these are all nice and you know it's not set off, it's lining up. I'm going to go ahead and carefully fill up the entire mold with ice malt, okay? So you wanna go all the way up to the top and fill it in. And I had a little bit less than what will fill all the way up, so what I can actually do, you could either go back and heat up more and just add on to it over top of what's already in there, or I can very carefully pick this up. And what I'm gonna do is just swirl it around being careful that I'm not separating the two bottles because you don't want it to spill out. But I'm just kind of rolling this around and tilting this up so that it reaches to the top of the mold. And now once I've covered the entire mold, I'm just gonna go ahead and dump the excess out back into the bowl. All right, so I'm gonna let that all drain out. And what that's gonna do is create a shell inside so that your beer bottle will actually be hollow. Okay, so I just let all of that drain out as much as I can. And we're actually gonna go back and fill this up again. So the first layer you don't, it isn't as critical to get all of the, every last drop out of the beer bottle mold, but you wanna get as much as you can and then go back with that same isomalt and fill it back up. So by doing it twice, it just adds a double layer and it's gonna make it a little bit stronger and less fragile. All right, and again, set this here, rotate it. You could potentially even do more layers. You don't necessarily just have to do two. If you wanted this really, really sturdy, you could do more layers than this, depending on if you have to drive with it or if it has to travel a long way. You could always make it a little bit more durable and kind of tailor it to what you need. So now, from this last layer here, the second layer, I'm just gonna let all of the excess drain out. Since the top of the bottle, the cap uh, end of the bottle, 
is going to be up here. We don't want any excess pooling at the bottom when we flip this back over to let it cool. So we want to make sure or else you could have a dark spot right there where it all kind of pooled. So we want to make sure that we just let all of that excess isomalt drain out. Okay, so I let all that drain out and I'm just going to flip it back over and it could take 20 to 30 minutes to cool. So I'm just going to leave this out in the air. We don't want to put it in the fridge or the freezer because we don't want any condensation to make the ice melt tacky. So we just want to leave this out in the air for about 20 to 30 minutes and we will come back and unmold it. Okay, so it's been about 25 minutes and my bottle should be ready to unmold. So I'm just going to remove the rubber bands from the mold first. Just like that. And now I'm going to kind of start from one side and start just working kind of the corner of the mold open and just kind of slowly release it from the mold. You don't want to hurry this because you don't want to crack the bottle. Even though we did those double coats, it still can be fragile. Okay, so you can see now how the air has gone in. And that piece has come off and then we'll do the same thing for the other side. Just kind of release it from the sides. You can set it down at this point. Just kind of flex it just like an ice cube tray. And then just kind of gently lift it out with your fingers. Just like that. Okay. If you have any little bits that kind of went into the seam, just break them off with your finger. Like that. And then on the bottom, usually they should sit pretty straight, but if you had any excess on the bottom that you wanted to get rid of, you could heat up an electric griddle, spray a little bit of Pam on it or a cooking spray, and just kind of push it down and flatten that out, and then you have your ice malt bottle. Okay, now that my bottle is out of the mold, I'm going to finish it off with a cap and a label. So I printed out an icing image sheet that I found a template online and kind of customized it to what I need. So I have my Simi ice malt beer here. And I did take the plastic backing off first. Okay, obviously you don't want the plastic on there. So I just kind of peeled it off and I'm gonna use a little bit of piping gel on my paintbrush and just spread it over my label and that will help it to stick here. Get a little bit more. There we go. And now I'm going to center it right onto my bottle and just smooth it out there. Perfect. So there's my label. And now I also have the label for the neck of the bottle here. Okay, so I'm just going to smooth a little bit of piping gel onto that one. So I'm really just spreading it all around, making sure that you get the edges so that they don't curl upwards or anything, that it's all nice and secure. Then center it to this label here. Wrap it around. So now we just need a bottle cap. So I just have a little bit of wedding gold luster dust mixed with some alcohol in a cup here. And I'm going to paint over top of that brown and it should cover right there. And that will just kind of finish it off so that you can really see the detail on the edge of the cap all the way around. Okay, and there we have our finished bottle. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. For more tutorials and more information, you can visit my website, seemecakes.com. You can also like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. So until next time, keep life sweet.